This company went public not too long ago on 8 March 2019. They priced their IPO at $12 per share. And the time of shooting today, their share price is $110 US dollar a share. Yes, that's more than 640% increase in less than two and a half years. Hey guys, I'm Alex. Welcome to Behind the Store where I dissect company information and report to discover and identify investment opportunities for you. We upload new episodes every Friday, so make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. And today, let's talk about this company called Futu. You're probably thinking, eh? This name sounds familiar. Yes, you have been watching my videos for the past few weeks. You have heard me mention about them. Now you know, their parent company is also a listed company. So why not look into them? And even Futu Singapore has been collaborating with Behind The Stock for the last few episodes. As usual, we will be objective and honest in our company analysis. But of course, as always, our videos are for learning purposes. It's not a buy or sell recommendation. Remember always to do your own research and homework. Moving on, Futu Holdings Limited was founded in 2007 and is headquartered in Hong Kong. They operate as a holding company in digitized brokerage and wealth management platform in China, Hong Kong, US and internationally. Through their fully proprietary digitized brokerage platform, Futubu was built for retail Chinese investors and younger Chinese investors to make it easier for them to invest globally. This is because Chinese investors are increasingly interested to invest in global markets. For one, many top Chinese companies like Baidu, Alibaba and Tencent are listed in US and Hong Kong. Besides that, the Shanghai and Shenzhen exchanges may have fewer opportunities in growth companies. Also, investing globally is good for diversification. Catering to the Chinese investor, they specially designed the Futubu platform's interface to fit Chinese investors' preferences. Other than that, through Futu Holdings subsidiaries, they also offer brokerage platforms to investors outside of China. For those in Singapore, through Futu Singapore, they offer a fully digitized brokerage service covering various markets via the online trading platform, Mumu App. It is also available for US-based investors. As of 2019, the largest investor of Futu is Tencent. Now, just in case if you don't know Tencent, they are actually the world's largest video game vendor and they also own WeChat. Basically, they are just a big deal, uh, Tencent. As for the largest shareholder of Futu with 37% of share outstanding is the company CEO and founder, Leif Huali. Fun fact, he worked in Tencent for eight years. He joined in 2000 and was the 18th founding employee of Tencent. He was an early and key R&D participant in Tencent QQ and the founder of Tencent Video. In fact, Futu's former CTO also came from Tencent. He was the former head of Tencent's QQ's back-end services. In December 2018, Futu entered into a strategic cooperation framework agreement with Tencent's subsidiary. In fact, Tencent founder Ponima also speaks highly of Futu, praising the team's high technological innovation capabilities. So, how does Futu make money? Well, they have three business segments. First is brokerage commissions and handling charge income. Futu generates commissions and execution fees on securities brokerage. Handling charge income primarily consists of fees from settlement and dividend collection services. This revenue is driven by trading volume and commissions rates. Second is interest income. This consists of interest income from margin financing, bank deposits, IPO financing, and securities borrowing and lending services. Third is other revenues. This is revenue from IPO distribution service like underwriting and new share subscriptions services. It also includes income from market data service and employee share option plan or ESOP management service income and others. As of 2020, the main revenue driver is brokerage commissions which represents 60% of total revenue. Next is followed by their interest income and other revenue. Over the past three years, the company has been diversifying to reduce the heavy percentage of commission revenue compared to total revenue. Looking into company's growth, Futu main markets are in mainland China and Hong Kong. However, in recent years, Futu has started to expand abroad to countries such as Singapore and the US. In terms of users, Futu's user base has grown from 5.6 million by end of 2018 to 7.5 million in 2019 and further to 11.9 million by end of 2020. In terms of monthly active users, it went from around 374,000 in 2018 to 1.8 million in 2020. Daily active users also increased from 151,000 in 2018 to 679,000 in 2020. 
property. Not only that, Futu Client's base has also grown from 502,000 in 2018 to 1.4 million by end of 2020. With the business moving forward, Futu also benefits from this growth prospects. First is the growth in China's offshore retail trade volume. Between 2015 and 2030, the proportion of affluent Chinese, which means the high and upper middle class, is expected to rise from 10% to 35% of the total population. Chinese investors are also increasingly interested in investing in external markets. Combined with the increase in wealth, this will result in a rapid increase of trades or investments in global markets by Chinese investors. From 2012 to 2017, the volume of trades in offshore markets by Chinese traders grew by a KGA of almost 91%. From 2018 to 2022, the KGA is expected to remain high at 35%. Besides that, there's also rising popularity in wealth management products. Globally, asset and management worldwide is expected to increase to 145 trillion US dollar in 2025 from 85 trillion in 2016. That's about 6.2% annual growth. Asia Pacific in particular will experience the fastest growth. It's predicted to be 11.8% annual growth from 2020 to 2025. This growth is beneficial for Futu since they are expanding into the wealth management business. They were also able to attract more customers or cross sales to existing customers. So for Alex Mittal, I'll rate Futu's growth as great. Now, let's talk about Futu's strength or competitive advantage. I would say it's their network effect. Apart from brokerage services, Futu also have their own in-app community. Investors can discuss about the stocks, talk about various topics like market trends, investment opportunities, and share their portfolios. As the community and engagement grows, it will attract more investors to join the platform. This also creates more user-generated content. As the cycle repeats, it creates a network effect. By end of 2020, users spend an average of 38 minutes per trading day on Futu's platform. It increased from only 24 minutes in 2019. Another competitive advantage is the switching cost. Futu has quarterly retention rates of 98%. This means that almost all their customers are sticking to their platform. This would suggest relatively high switching costs. For example, having to transfer position or liquidate assets before moving to another platform, it can be costly in time and money, and it's troublesome. Personally, I would hate to have to do that and would avoid doing so. Currently, Futu has no huge competitors except for UpFintech Holdings, which many of you know as Tiger Brokers. Therefore, customer loyalty may not have been truly tested yet. They could jump shit if a new broker offers lower rates. The upside is that Futu was founded in 2007, while UpFintech Holdings was founded only in 2014. It's a good start that currently Futu's customer retention is good, which can help them build a strong business mode for the future. So for Alex Mittal, I'll rate Futu's strength as good. Of course, there are also risks for Futu. As with any other company, one of it is regulatory risks. In terms of currency conversions, currently, the state's administration of foreign exchange, SAFE, has a strict limit on each Chinese citizen. They can only convert a maximum of renminbi equivalent of 50,000 US dollar into any other foreign currency. Since Futu does not hold a related license in mainland China, this means their retail customers are bound by this law. While Futu does not engage in currency conversion activities, they do not have control of how their clients convert the money. If regulators clamp down currency conversion practices, it could affect trading volume in general. And although Futu doesn't have a brokerage license in China, their subsidiaries do have over 43 licenses across key financial markets such as US, Hong Kong, Singapore, etc. They are also regulated by the SEC, FINRA, and several others. You can read more from their website. Other than that, there's also concentration risk to be aware of. Commission revenue makes up majority of Futu's total revenue, which could also be unsustainable. Since Futu adopts a low commission strategy, they were able to attract millions of customers to their platform. However, commission fees in general are experiencing a downward trend. According to Statista, the industry average commission fee in mainland China decreased from 0.126% in 2008 to 0.03% in 2019. It is likely that their commission fees will continue to decrease in the long run. A few online brokers have even completely cut out their commission fees. Commission revenue is also tied to the number of trades executed. So fluctuations in the trading volume will directly impact commission's revenue. A decrease in trading volumes could be due to uncontrollable factors like political conditions, changes in markets, economic downturns, and more. 
To deal with this, Futu has to rapidly attract more customers, increase trading volume or reduce their reliance on commission fees by diversifying into other products and services. Last but not least, there's also risk in potential competition. Futu is one of the leading low-cost online brokerage in China. However, there are also many legacy brokerage in China that are older and bigger. Among the top 10 largest brokerage in the world, 7 are Chinese companies. As new players join, they might also offer lower or no commission fees. Futu may find it difficult to keep the customers or they will have to decrease their rates which will hurt their revenue. Futu is also available internationally where they do face competitions from other established players like IB, TD Ameritrade, Saxo, and more. So for Alex Meter, I'll rate Futu's risk as mid to high risk. Next on, let's go into the financial parts of the business. Let's go into the profitability. Revenue and net income is growing strong with high gross profit margin and net profit margin. ROE is improving as well right now at 35%. However, do note that their debt to equity is currently at 2.56 times, which is extremely high. This also explains why their ROE shot up so much. Of course, on positive side, they do able to generate strong cash flow. So for Alex Meter, I'll rate Futu's financial as decent. So, after watching my analysis, would you add Futu into your watch list? To understand the company's products even more, why not sign up for a Futu Singapore Securities account with Mumu app? As you have learned, Futu Singapore offers a fully digitized brokerage service covering various markets. Via their online trading platform, Mumu app, you can access to US, Hong Kong and Singapore stocks, China HS, ETFs, REITs and more. Plus, when you deposit and trade with Mumu app, you can claim up to 2 free Pfizer shares and 5 free Haiti Lao shares. All info, links and step-by-step -step guide can be found in the description. Like this video and share with your friends and family, subscribe to vChannel and turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss out my future video. Till then, I'm Alex and goodbye. Hong Kong, US and internationally. Aiyah. Oh, Intentionally, internationally. He was the former head of Tencent's. Oh yeah.